Hey guys, I'm Kyle with Rhino. In this video, I wanna show you how to set up your Rhino system for the first time. Now, we're gonna start with the Rhino slider. The only thing you really have to know about this is to make sure your carriage brake is off. It allows your slider to move smoothly. If you're setting up your motion kit and it's not moving, you probably have this brake on. So let's make sure it's off. Next up, let's go to arc two. The first thing we have to do is power it on. So we're gonna press and hold for three seconds. You'll see the Rhino logo, and then you'll have a menu in front of you. You wanna go right all the way over to mount on off, click in, select on, and it says set arc two on mounting slider, which I'm already doing, and hold on. So then you click in, say I'm ready. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the pan motor to mount it onto the slider. Now, if you're not using a slider, you do this exactly the same way, but onto a tripod. The screen now says tighten base with mounting tool. The mounting tool is in the front of the unit right here, retained with a spring. And what you wanna do is insert it into the bottom of the pan disc and just snug it up a little bit. Stash that back there, click done. We're not gonna set up a video move quite yet. That'll be a different video. Next up, we're gonna mount our motor. And here we have the high speed variant. We also have a high torque option. One thing to note, if you are using the high torque motor and you are going on inclines or vertical, you have to make sure that your motor is on the top end of the slider or else the belt will slip. So mounting the motor is extremely easy. You just wanna back out these screws, which are already backed out for me here. Set your motor on top of the drive shaft it should set on right there and then tighten these up securely. All right, now that we have our motor mounted, let's talk about some of the cabling. It's important and we've designed it in a specific way so that the cabling doesn't get in the way of your slider as it moves across. With every motor, you get two cables, one meant for the 24 inch slider and one designed for the 42 inch slider that's longer. But before we plug that in, we need to talk a little bit more about cable management and the shutter release cable. If you are shooting a time lapse and using Arc 2 as your intervalometer, you want to make sure you install your shutter release cable first. It goes in on the farthest port to the left. Just pushes in like this and then connects directly to your camera. The reason for that is the next cable that we install is our motor cable and that goes on top of it. You can't install this cable after the fact. And that's because you don't wanna hot swap motors on this system. Sometimes it will affect the motor driver and one of the axes won't work and then you have to restart your unit in order to re-enable that motor. It's just a hardware limitation of the motor drivers that we're using. Since I'm shooting on a RED today, I'm not gonna need the shutter release cable because I don't time lapse with my RED. Um, so we still have our cable plugged into the front what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this around the backside and plug it into the motor that's facing me. Now the system has been designed to have the motor on the right side of your slider when you're using it. Sometimes you might need it on the left side, it's totally fine. You can switch that in settings so that your moves aren't messed up. But for cable routing, it is designed to push the cable out over the rail and underneath this motor in order that the cable won't get pinched in the rails. Now your slider is ready to go for a three axis pan tilt slide move. Now, if you purchased Rhino Focus for the full four axis system, it's really easy to install. What we'll do first is plug in the RJ45 cable into focus, insert the rod into the hole, and we'll clamp it down here for now. I'll show you how to set it up for your specific lens here in just a second. And then this cable plugs in right next to the linear motor cable. Those are labeled so you don't get them mixed up. Next up, we're gonna mount the 501 compatible plate onto your camera. At this point, you're typically looking for a coin or a key to mount your plate onto your camera. That's why the mounting tool is dual function. You can use it to tighten down arc two. You can also use it to install plates onto your cameras and it has a handy bottle opener built into it. We'll line these up with the holes in the bottom. And you 
use the mounting tool to snug them up. One thing you should know about 501 plates is that they come in different lengths. If you have a camera and you're using a cinema lens that's really heavy, you need to use a longer plate and mount your camera further back to center the weight over the tilt arm. That'll be really important for you. So we have our camera ready to go. The lever is released. Let's push in the button, slide it on. And there's a hard stop on the front. So your, your camera's not gonna slide off the front and it's not gonna slide off the back now. We'll clamp the lever arm down. Now with the 501 plate that we include, the tension is set for that specific plate. And 501 plates do change in size from time to time. So if you do need to adjust this, it's an adjustable cam mechanism that uses an M3 hex driver. So if you wanna loosen up or tighten up, if you're using your other 501 plates, feel free to do so. This looks pretty balanced here. Now I'm gonna set up focus for my lens. To do that, I'm gonna loosen the focus lever. And this allows me to change the position forward and backward, and then also change the angle of it. So you just engage the threads like that, tighten it up, and I'm ready to start my move. Now, this is just a basic video of getting your gear set up for the first time. Watch the rest of our videos on how to actually create a move and more creative shots, or you can reach out to support at rhinocg.com.